I'd like to show you this little skeleton that I created that I named book template. Inside my folder here I have two things. I have a folder called chapter one with nothing in it and then I have this HTML web page called book HTML. I'm going to right click it, edit with notepad plus plus to show you the code. And the code starts off like any other. You've got your opening HTML tag and at the bottom you're closing. You've got your head here with a title and a style inside of it and your body beginning tag and the ending tag and everything that you see in between these green commented uh, designs right here are basically all copy and paste with just some minor changes like chapter 18 goes to chapter 19 and then in the link right here we have to create a folder called chapter 18 and then we have to create individual web pages inside there and then you have to give it a link that corresponds with what the page is about so that's basically copy and paste so I don't have to go through all that so it looks like there's a lot more code than it really is but uh, as far as the body goes again we have uh, an iframe with an ID of TV so that if we wanted to style that iframe we would take pound TV here in the style tag we would say pound TV and then in curly braces we would give it some kind of style I'm not going to do that. I styled all this other stuff. I'm not going to style the iframe that way. Um, it's got a name of TV because this is how you link from an href link <clears throat> by using the target keyword. Target equals TD, I mean TD, TV, and name equals TV. That's going to target your link to that iframe. And then we've got a field set again with a legend and uh, our legend caption says chapter one inside that field set after the legend is an ordered list OL means ordered and so we're going to be using numbers each time we add a new list item it's going to have the next highest number we have three list items so we're going to have a list item with a number one in front of it a list item with a number two in front of it and a list item of number three in front of it uh, we gave our ordered list a class of blue and back up here in our style the class of blue style is right there dot blue border 20 pixel uh, this is a color outset so that is all in the border style and it's given a width of 150 pixels so everywhere that I have OL class blue is going to get that particular style which in this particular case I gave every single field set Oh well, a class of blue. If I wanted to change to alternating styles for each single one of these OL classes inside a field set, one might be OL class blue, one might be OL class green, one might be blue, green, blue, green. If I wanted to alternate or change the styles, I would just create a new class and change the name from class blue to maybe dot red with a totally different class uh, style inside. In this particular situation, I only have one class, and I'm using them for every single OL. Then after the OL, uh, back to the LI again, you make uh, LI, we have an on-click event that when you click on it, color equals white. That's going to keep the list item a background color of white after you've clicked on it. And we have a link inside the list item right there. The beginning opening link says a ref equals and in double quotes chapter one forward slash eggs dot html target equals tv again that means that our uh, our page is going to open up in this uh, iframe name tv target tv eggs is the actual text that you're going to put your mouse over and click on in order to open the link in the iframe and we're going to do that three times we're going to have three list items we're going to create three different HTML files in that chapter one folder, which is currently empty. And um, I'm going to show you how this can be reused for different, different things. Like right now, this is kind of like a food or a recipe book. 
You can use it as an exercise journal. You could use it as notes for chapter one of your biology book. And you can create an HTML page that actually has notes about different things pertaining to chapter one. And each link is going to be another little page or more or however long of notes with images and anything else you want to put in. Maybe even uh, make it completely multimedia and have audio and video inside each page. So it's going to be a really interesting way to have notebooks or journals without actually using paper. Um, Let's see, so we got we throw three list items. Okay, then we have our ending OL tag that ends our ordered list and our ending field set. And that's our little chapter one section of our navigation. And all we do is copy and paste this to create our chapter two, except we change it from chapter one to chapter two right here. And instead of having that folder chapter one, we change that to chapter two. And we haven't created anything for that area yet. So all these are basically placeholders. That's why I call this a template. I'm not gonna mess anything up. And I just kept copying and pasting and adding what I may need in the future if I have a chapter three folder, what I'm gonna put in. And it starts off with three three placeholders and as I need more I can just copy and paste the last list item to add another page and add another list item um, and I do that all the way to 19 possible chapters which in most cases I won't need that many if I do need more I'll just copy and paste this last one and alter it to chapter 20 and this will be chapter 20 and I'll change it as I go so that ends that particular field set. There are no more field sets to this navigation so I end the body and I end the HTML. Um, I'd like to run this before I go over the actual styles. The styles are right here in the head. The uh, title of book is in the head. I will show you where book, the word book, is when we run this in a browser. So you hit run and you've got these selections. Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, and Safari. I actually have um, I have Firefox, Safari, Chrome, and Opera down here in my toolbar. In order for me to look at this in Opera, because it doesn't say launch, launch in Opera for some reason, then I, I'll open it in one of them. I'm hitting run. I'm waiting for it to run. This is what my template looks like. This uh, I, I've also created hover events so that I could explain to you what this is and how the hover event works for only this element. This is a hover event for the field, uh, for the uh, iframe, I'm sorry, the iframe. This is a hover event for the field set. This is a hover event for the legend. This is a hover event for the ordered list. And this is a hover event for the list item. And you see that it, it, we do the field set and the legend over and over again. We do the ordered list over and over again. And the same thing with the list items. And it just repeats itself because all of this is copy and paste all the way to chapter 19. Just in case I have that many chapters, these will be placeholders that all I'll need to do is change the name of the link and, and the address uh, which we want to link and open up in this, in this uh, iframe. So this is what it looks like. Um, up here, when I said uh, the title was in the head of the HTML, you got the word book right here. And down here at the bottom, where your start toolbar is and all these uh, launch icons, um, it says book slash Mozilla Firefox. If I were to go back to my book HTML and hit run, let's launch it in Chrome. It's going to look pretty much the same, slightly different, just slightly. You can see how it's just a little different, but the functionality should be the same. As I hover over the iframe, you got the green background. As I hover over the field set, the background turns yellow. As I hover over the ordered list, it turns orange. And as I get to the list item in the ordered list, it turns red. And it's and the uh, legend has a purple w background with white font. So this is what it looks like in Google. Let's open it and let's run it in Safari and see what it looks like in Safari. And it's thinking, I'm gonna open this up. 
and ever so slightly different, but not a whole lot, and the same functionality. Yellow, orange, red, purple, and white. And the last one that I want is I want it in Opera. But since I can't hit Run in Opera, I have to open Opera first. Okay, there's my Opera. And I'll minimize it for just a second so that I can go up here in my address bar, highlight it, right click, copy, open my Opera up again, go into the um, address bar again, right click and hit paste and go. Now I can see what it looks like in Opera. Functionality still the same. Um, yellow field set, purple and white legend, orange ordered list, and red list item. Same functionality. Now I do not have anything in these links. When you click a link you get this web page is not found. No web page was found for the web address. And then it gives you the path where it's looking for that. Well, I have not created it. As a matter of fact, this isn't even a name, dash, 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 dot, HTML. It's a placeholder so that when I do create one, the only thing I have to do is come in here and type what I want the name of that web page to be created and put it in a folder called uh, Chapter 2 inside the folder called book template and I'll be good to go. When I click on this it's going to go inside here and it's going to highlight uh, this link as um, a visited link and it's going to uh, it's an on-click event that when you click it it's going to change the background color to white. So that's another function. Um, when I have a page that is supposed to open up in here you see this green this is showing you the padding that the iframe has. If I had zero padding, then this web page would open up completely and you would see no padding at all. If I change this padding to 50 and the page, the, this web page is not found, or the web page itself would open, there would be this ring of green that would be a lot thicker because the padding would be a lot thicker. Okay, let's see what else. Eggs, I've not created in chapter one folder eggs.html yet again you're gonna get this error message the web page is not found bacon bacon is not found toast toast is not found that's what it looks like in opera if we go back to safari let's try to see what happens you hit eggs and you get nothing so in safari they don't give you an error message it just stays white they figure, hey, nothing's going on, nothing's going on. You also don't see any kind of padding for something that is pretending to be there when it's not. Let's go to Chrome and see how it works. Click eggs. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get an error message. It's looking for the page. We're getting that poor guy. The file or directory cannot be found. Bacon. It's not even showing us uh, the actual direct, uh, path. It's just saying it cannot be found, plain and simple. So Chrome gives us that. Uh, Firefox, when you click it, gives us this whole big long message, file not found. File not found, file not found. OK. So we're going to correct this by creating this these files. But we're not going to do it in my template. I I created a few little things here to show you examples and I'm going to go in the code and show you these highlight things so that you see what the elements are and how they're styled and where they are. But after that, I'm going to close out of all of this and I'm going to close out of all of this and I'm going to make any more changes in a brand new, I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't corrupt this file. I don't do anything that's going to damage the whole thing or put too much in there so that I can't reuse this for something different every time and make mild changes. So let me close. I don't need all these. Well, I guess I could leave all these browsers just so I can show any changes. Well, no, no, because it won't be to this. It'll be to a different path. So let me get out of all of these. Let me get out of this, and I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna mess with uh, Internet Explorer because it always changes what you're doing, and I'm not trying to work that hard right now. Um, I do need one thing though. 
I'm going to open it in Firefox. So half of the page is going to be showing the browser, and the other half of the page is going to show the output in the browser window, the browser window output, and then the code, so that I can point that this does this, and so on and so forth. So you start off with the HTML. There's the head. There's the title with the name of book. Book is here, and book is down here. If I change the title to ZZZ, save, refresh the page, now it's ZZZ up here and ZZZ way down here at the bottom where it says ZZZ book slash Mozilla Firefox. I'm going to take my Z's off, save that, then we've got a style. We have a body with a margin of zero pixels and a padding of 10 pixels. We have an iframe, which is this over here that's highlighting in green, that has position fixed, top 10 pixels, and left 245 pixels. What that means is that when we take our scroll bar here and move it up and down, the only thing that's moving with the scroll bar is these navigation items that, well, they're, they're the elements that I'm using as navigation, which turn out to be um, lists with um, links inside. But since this is fixed, it's not going to move no matter what you do with the scroll bar. And it's going to be 10 pixels from the top of your page, and it's going to be 245 pixels from the left of your page. It's also going to have a width of 70% and a height of 90%, so that it has a little bit of sponge to get a little bigger and a little smaller, depending on the size of the um, window. If the window's this big, well, let's see, i got to do it a little bit more like this. It will not totally get really small. Like we can't. This this project is not made for iPhones. It's not made for narrow tablets. It's made for screens that start at about here, because you get to see the whole iframe with the border, and you can go a little bigger. But once you get here, then your screen starts overlapping over the iframe. So this is not made for very small devices. Just to from about here and bigger. And same thing with the height. About here, and see, you could still see a little bit. It's, it's squishing it a little. You could see some of the bottom, but then after a while, it starts covering up the iframe. So about here and bigger, it's good for. Okay, so that basically, I want to go back to half and half. Whoops. I want to go back to half the screen. Not that way, vertically. Alrighty, um, doesn't matter what side. So I explained the position fixed top left of this iframe, the width and the height. The background color initially is white. The only reason it turns green is because down here I have created hover event ba back up. The hover event background colors that let me hover to show you what I'm talking about. The background color green is associated with the iframe hover. So as I hover over the iframe, I get a background color of green. If I were to change this to red and save it and then refresh the page, I'm going to get a background of red, which that really is horrible. So let me turn that back to an iframe background iframe hover background color green. Now in my template I'm leaving these hovers for instructional purposes. When I copy and paste this whole folder and change this from book HTML to recipes.html, I'm going to erase all these background event hover event background colors because I don't want all this coloration to happen in a normal web page because this is irritating. This is just for instructional purposes, example purposes of wh where the elements are and what a hover event will do and how it will actually indicate to you where the specific event is. Um, let's see, where did I stop? Background color of white for the field, uh, for the iframe. The border, which is this right here, this gray that goes all the way around that looks 3D and is rounded, um, is 15 pixels of gray ridge. The border radius of 20 pixels gives us the rounded corners and padding of 10 pixels is when you click here and then you try to 
find uh, the file not found, you see that red stops, that's 10 pixels worth of padding. If I change that padding to a higher, to a thicker padding, let's say padding 50 pixels and save it and refresh it. Now when I go here, you see that? You got 50 pixels before the web page shows up. That's too much for what I need, but I just wanted to show you how that padding worked. Okay, now it's back to 10 pixels of padding before the correct web page shows. Um, we have a field set with a width of 200 pixels and, and we also have a hover for our field set. Our field set hover has a background color of yellow. So I come over here to my field set, it's background ho a hover of background yellow and a width of 200 pixels. So this is 200 pixels from here to here. Um, the legend has a font weight of bolder. That's why the word chapter one is uh, thicker than eggs, bacon, and toast. Eggs, bacon, and toast have the regular width, uh, I mean font weight. Chapter one is more like a marker where eggs is more like a pencil. Uh, I also have the legend hover right here background color purple color white. So here's the legend that says chapter one. You go to chapter two legend and you see that you get the consistent style change based on these styles that we're putting in our head. Then we have something called the OL which uh, is an ordered list and we have an OL hover the background cover for the OL, which is the ordered list, is orange, and it also, besides being orange when we hover over it, it has all of these. So I'm going to hover over it so you see what it is. There's orange. It's got a margin of zero pixels, a padding of zero pixels, a color of white, which is what where, what our one, two, three is. If I change this color of white right now to color of blue and save it and refresh the page, voila. Now the color of the OL, uh, the numerals, is blue. But I don't want to keep it blue. I want to change it back to white. That just shows you that. We got a border radius of 20 pixels, a background color of gray, and all of this WebKit stuff. I'm not going to read all that, but all the rest of these three lines that have the WebKit box shadow, the pixels, and the RGBA style that controls how this uh, shadow is that goes all the way around this particular um, ordered list. Another thing, you see this big thick border that's rounded that goes around the orange ordered list? I have a special class called dot blue. That means class blue. Border of 20 pixels. That's pretty thick. If I change that border even thicker to 40 pixels, Watch what happens. Watch what happens to the border of this orange. Really, very chunky, wouldn't you say? Which it looks kind of interesting. I could leave it, but I'm not going to. All right, where did I get that? Okay, that came with this class. What happened, how I did that was in the body, when I create the element itself, this is the uh, ordered list element tag, the opening class, uh, tag, I gave it a class of blue. Now if I took the next field set for chapter 2, field set legend OL, if I took that class off of that particular OL and saved it, if I can get my mouse to work, save it and run it, look at the difference. You got the border here and everywhere else you got the big thick border but you took the class off of this one so it does ha it has no border at all this shows you as soon as I touch the OL the ordered list it turns orange and then you've got the list items right here there's a list item there's a list item and there's a list item that has the hover of red uh, hover the list item hover gives us a background of red that's but ugly. So I want to go back here and put that back where it belongs. Class blue. And refresh. And so there. Now they're more consistent. If I wanted to make each of these uh, borders alternate a different color, what I could do is up here where I created that blue class, I can copy and paste this 
but instead of it being dot blue let's give it a new name because we're going to have alternating colors of borders here and then I'm going to change this instead of whatever this number is that means that particular color I'm going to say red and make life easy and then what I'm going to do is chapter one is going to have the OL class blue chapter two is going to have the OL class red because that's the name of the new class I made now watch what happens I click this and I can put a red border anywhere that I put that class as a matter of fact if I'm not mistaken let me see what happens when I take my iframe in the body where do I create my my iframe right here just for the heck of it let me see what happens if I give the iframe a class of red let's see what we get wow that's like really horrible because it gave it this border but my iframe is styled uh, it's got other styles other than just that class red so we want to definitely take that off because it got rid of our width it got rid of every specification that we gave it every style we gave it and screwed us over okay so let's change that let's take the um, red example out because I don't want to use that right now let's change that chapter 2 OL back to our uh, consistent class of blue and let's run it okay now we're back back to some sense of normalcy all right inside this orange list is our one two three list items and here's how you do a list item let me put some space in between so that you don't think it's all the same you have li on click equals style dot background color equals white this is a uh, double quotes style dot background color equals single quote white single quote end of sentence uh, statement which is a semicolon and then the uh, ending double quote that is the beginning opening li tag this is the ending li tag that li goes with that li the ending tags are always very brief while the opening or beginning tags of an element always have this extra detailed stuff in it and inside the list item is a link and this whole thing is a link the beginning of the link goes from here to here and it says a ref equals in this particular one, chapter two forward slash dot uh, uh, dash 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 dot HTML, we did not create the H2 uh, yet. We did not create this file yet. Um, the target is TV. Again, the name of the, I might as well move up here and look at these. Um, the name of the iframe is TV, so that is the target TV links it. It links this link to this iframe. So this page this page one it, once it's created will open inside this iframe which is right here um, but since since we haven't created this yet we get the file not found but this is how we do each of the links the only thing that gets changed is the address for the a ref and the link that you click on to open this inside of this okay I think I've done enough toying around in this I think I've showed you everything because really all the rest of these chapters are just this field set copied and pasted over and over and over again the only thing that changes is the number of the chapter and then we're going to change the folder right here from chapter one to chapter two and then we're going to give each chapter its own number of pages whether it's three or more um, that are going to target into the um, TV iframe so that we can look at our notes that we create so let's get out a book let's close this up and let's right click the whole book template folder copy and paste it right on the desktop now let's get rid of this because I don't want anything to happen to it because I might want to use it for later. Start and go in my documents. Good night.
Now we're going to rename this. I don't want to have that name, copy of. So we're going to call this, whoops, recipes. Did I spell that right? We're going to open it up. And I'm going to change this from book. I'm going to, I could rename this to recipes if I want, or I can name it index.html um, because that's what it is when you click on it. It's actually starting the whole ball. It's starting the whole ball of wax. It's it's showing you everything that you need to do the web page. We have that chapter one folder, but there's nothing in it. Well, we need to fix that. So let's let's right click index and let's hit edit with Notepad. So now we're in Notepad. We now have the title that we're not going to leave as book. We're going to change that to recipes, and that must be spelled wrong, so let's right click it. I guess maybe that's how you spell recipes. Well, if that's how I spell recipes, then I need to fix my folder. Rename recipes. That just looks like recipes to me. In any event right click this edit with notepad there we go again now when you're in notepad to create a new file you just right click to the right of the tab that's already there and then you hit file save as now we are going to create these new pages in the chapter one folder and we want eggs.html now we have eggs now we want to create an html file so the way we start off is we create our HTML opening tag and closing tag. Then we go inside there and we create a head and a closing head. And then we create a body and the closing body. So far we have a page but we don't have anything that's going to output on the browser window. So let's put a paragraph tag and let's just say this is the eggs page. Now, when we go to the index and run it, launch in Firefox or whichever browser you prefer, you click on eggs and you get this is the eggs page. Oh, and I forgot, I wanted to get rid of all those hovers. Okay, so. We didn't create bacon yet. We didn't create toast, so we still get file not found. We're just going to copy and paste the eggs page and give it another name and change the inside paragraph to say this is the bacon page and this is the toast page, and it's, it'll open up accordingly. But let's go to that hover in our index.html. Let's get rid of that hover junk because we don't want to deal with that. That's ugly. Um, let's clean up our blank spaces to make it a little more... Um, nicer to read. We can clean this up. And that. What else do I need to change? Let's uh, go to the eggs, double click to the right again, file, save as. We're already inside of our chapter one folder. We're going to create our bacon one now. Bacon.html. Save. Now just go to your eggs and highlight all this. Right click, copy, and just paste it into bacon. And then just change the word eggs to bacon. And save it. Now click it again. Save as. Let's save the next one as toast dot html save go to bacon or or you can if if the if the clipboard still has the eggs you can paste it again which it does so then just change this to toast save it and let's run it and see what happens so you go back to your index.html hit run 
Now when you click eggs, this is the eggs page. Notice up here it's now called recipes and down here at the bottom it's now called recipes. That's the title in the head. And here's the links that are actually opening up absolutely different pages in our little area. This is the bacon page. Toast, this is the toast page. So if we were to take a picture of eggs, we could actually put the, the eggs image up here. Same thing with the bacon, a different image of bacon, and same thing with the toast, different thing with toast. We could put uh, a voice, an audio clip in here. We could put a video of actually making eggs, and that would open up also in this page, you, you know, uh, or toast or whatever it is you're making. Um, let's, let's add another link. Let's go to our index of chapter one. Let's, uh, let's make a link called juice. And maybe we'll have recipes for creating different juices. So you copy that whole link, go down a couple spaces, control V to paste it. You're going to change your link itself to the word juice. And you're going to have to create a brand new web page called juice. And then go over here and double click, file, save as, juice.html, save right click and paste again oops okay this is what happens when you right click at, when you copy and paste different things to the clipboard so go back to your toast or any of these others that you want and uh, newly copy and paste that and then just change this to juice okay now let's look at what it looks like we've created a new link and a new page to match it Let's launch this one in Chrome for shits and giggles because we want our functionality to work no matter what browser. And look, we got rid of that hover. That ugly hover is gone so we can hover anywhere and we don't have to see that weirdness. I'm going to click on eggs. This is the eggs page. Bacon. This is the bacon page. Toast. This is a toast page. Juice. Ooh, something's wrong with our juice page. Toast. Juice. Okay, what did we do wrong with the juice page? It's called juice.html. It's spelled correctly. Let's go to the index. Juice.html. Juice. File. Save as. Look, I accidentally saved my juice file that I created in the recipes folder. It's right next to the index. It should be inside of the chapter one folder. So all we need to do is take this and just drag it into the chapter one folder and get out of there. Um, we can go back in the chapter one folder, right click juice, and edit with notepad so now it'll open up in the with the right path go to index run launch in chrome hit refresh let's try it again eggs bacon toast and juice hallelujah breakfast time okay swift so we got that working but what I'd like to know is how come I hit when I hit my refresh, when I first start my program, I have a blank page. When you have a website, you might want to have a welcome page or some kind of cover page. The first thing that they look at before they actually start clicking on links instead of this big old blank thing. Well, it's easy enough to do that. And how we do that is we just create another page. Let's give it the name of cover. And instead of putting it inside this folder right here, Let's go up one. We're going to put it in right next to the index. And we're going to call this cover.html. We're going to save. We're going to go on ahead and even though this is going to be different than our juice and everything else, we're still going to copy and paste it because it's going to give us our HTML, our head and our body without having to retype all that. Now instead of paragraph tags, let's use header tags, h1 and ending h1 tags and let's say in capitals 
this is the cover page. So this page is always going to open every single time you initially open this index. And how we do that is that we go to our iframe where everything opens up in and we've got iframe IDTV and name TV. We're going to stick our cursor in between the end of that double quote and the greater than sign, give ourselves a space or two, and then we're going to hit C, I mean S, whoops, get rid of the caps, SRC for source equals, and then two double quotes. Then inside that double quotes, we're going to give it cover.html. Now every time this loads, that cover page is going to open instead of a big blank spot. So let's give it a shot. Index, run, let's launch it in Safari this time. Okay. This is the cover page. So whatever you want the cover page to look like. Let's say you want the cover page to have um, some script in it that shows you the date, uh, the, the, the day of the week, the month, the time of day. You can, you can do whatever you want on here. Um, then when the user comes here and looks at all the different things that you got going on, uh, when they refresh it, when they close out of it or just refresh it, they're going to start at the beginning again. So that's what the refresh should always do. The refresh should start you at the beginning. Um, unless you have cookies set where you want the browser to remember something in a certain way and you don't want it to start at the beginning. Well, I, I have not covered that part of uh, that type of code yet. This is a lot simpler than that. So that this is uh, Safari. I've already got Chrome. Let's see what Chrome does. This is the cover page. Eggs, bacon, toast, juice, refresh. This is the cover page. Let's try Firefox. Okay, let's refresh it. We got a problem with Firefox. We refreshed it and we're not getting the cover page at all. Eggs, eggs, bacon, toast, Juice, refresh. The only time we see the cover page with Firefox is the very first time we hit run, launch in Firefox. And I'm waiting. It's the only time it gives me my cover page. So I have to figure out how to configure Firefox so that it does not do that. I've already went to the tools and the options and I have already chose um, privacy, never remember history, clear all current history. I've unchecked all of this stuff and it simply still sticks when I hit refresh. It does not give me my cover page like it's supposed to. So maybe if I uninstall Firefox browser and reinstall it uh, and maybe then it'll work. Otherwise I really don't know what to do about this at this point but I'm not going to really worry about it a whole lot. I'm just going to test the rest of my code in Chrome, which is this one, which seems to work. There's bacon, and there is, this is the difference. Again, bacon, this is uh, the size of a paragraph font, but when I refresh it, this is the size of an H1 header tag, so it's substantially larger. All righty. I am trying to think of what else I wanted to do. Let me see. I'll get out of that. Um, what you could do if you, this was going to be a recipe page, instead of chapter one here, you can go in your index page and change your legend caption. You might call this breakfast foods. And each page will show you different ways to make eggs, different ways uh, to make bacon, to make toast and juice, or just different types of bacon, different types of toast, different juices, uh, however you want to do that. And we click recipes and 
So now you'll have breakfast foods. The next one, you might change that to lunch foods, the next dinner. Or instead of eggs, bacon, toast, and juice, each one of these can be an individual recipe. You can have breakfast recipes. And then this could be a certain breakfast that has a certain kind of eggs, bacon, and toast. Whatever you want to put inside the particular page for the particular link. It's completely up to you. If you want this to be a journal, breakfast foods, instead of breakfast foods here, you might have Sunday and then the date and then you might have different points throughout your day that you actually um, you might actually you might actually say um, I don't know whatever you want to say whatever little note you want to give yourself I ran around the block in five minutes or whatever you want to do just make sure that you identify the name of your web page and um, the name of your link and the name of your web page should make sense to what's inside of it. You don't want to have a page called eggs.html and you don't want to link on eggs and then when you open up the page it says um, I ran around the block in five minutes. Uh, it would be very weird for you to make yourself that kind of thing. This is the cover page. I ran around the block in five minutes. So you've got to make sure that you tailor everything to whatever your topic is. So if you're going to copy and paste a template, just make sure that you change these things accordingly so that your actual links make, make sense. Um, I'm going to stop the video here because there's so much more I can do. I can add images, I can add audio clip, I can add video to each of these pages and I don't want to put that much more on this video because it's already I believe pretty long but what we're going to wind up doing is doing improvements to this particular breakfast food part of our notes or our book or whatever you want to call it. It's actually a web page so that's what you need to call it.